Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. So, I finally got around to watch The Devil All The Time this week, and I must say, it's a film that left an impression on me, and it's also a pretty messed up film. There's gonna be some mild spoilers in this video, nothing major, but if you don't want to know anything about the film, then you probably shouldn't watch this video. But anyway, The Devil All The Time is a gothic thriller set in the American Midwest, and the story is basically comprised of these numerous interweaving plot threads that span across multiple generations and collide with each other at various stages of the film, which results in a rather unpredictable plot filled with twists and turns that often result in some violence, murder, or just some disturbing act of religious fanaticism. There's quite a lot of that in here. And although this serves to create an overall tense and atmospheric narrative, its most thrilling scenes never quite reach their cinematic potential, especially when compared to great films like The Zodiac or No Country for Old Men. Films that featured really tense and chilling scenes between serial killers and their victims, and in the case of No Country for Old Men, it was also a film that had these separate stories that crossed paths in different stages of the film, which also usually led to violence or death. Now, I guess it's not really fair to compare these films, because the two I mentioned are kind of regarded as masterpieces and in my opinion they are legitimately some of the best films of the century. I don't feel like The Devil of the Time had those aspirations but there are definitely some parallels that can be drawn and also between other films based off the work of Cormac McCarthy like The Counselor for example which is in no way a masterpiece, but is similar to The Devil All The Time in terms of its violent and disturbing sequences, as well as a great ensemble cast. And this is actually the point that I want to make in this video, which is that for me, The Devil All The Time falls into this category of ensemble films in a way. I, I find it very similar to films like Lawless or August Osage County. Films that are filled with actors that have some great material to work with and are portraying characters that are very distinct from their previous work, which makes them stand out even more. And as I mentioned before, The Devil All The Time is definitely a film that's, you know, disturbing and intense in many ways. And this is not just because of the plot and the setting and the atmosphere, but it's mainly because of the work of the characters. They're really giving uh, these juicy roles in these films, which is why I feel like this is sort of an ensemble film. It features a lot of non-American actors doing these spot-on southern accents in the lead roles, ranging from Australians like Jason Clark, Mia Wasikowska, and then you have Brits like Tom Holland or Robert Pattinson, and one particular standout in Bill Skarsgård, who is Swedish and yet does a really good southern accent. I don't remember what I told you. About them boys on the bus that gave you the black eye. That's what I meant. Just gotta pick the right time. Yes, sir. There's a lot of no good sons of bitches out there. Better than some American actors, actually. I said, put the bunny back in the box. Why couldn't you put the bunny back in the box? Bill Skarsgård gave one of my favorite performances in this film and since I don't watch horror films he hasn't really been on my radar because I haven't seen his performance in it so this was really my first experience with him in a major role and I must say that he's definitely one of the biggest young talents in Hollywood right now and he's definitely someone to watch in the future because he was just spot on in this role and I really couldn't tell that he wasn't a native speaker. Now regarding the other performances Tom Holland basically plays the main role in the film and I think he did a decent job but I feel like he was miscast in this role. I don't think it's his fault. I feel like he really does his best and even does a great job on the accent. But there were quite a few scenes where I saw Peter Parker instead of Orvin Russell and maybe that's just me. But I just felt he seemed a little too young and that's something that's actually prevalent throughout this film. Quite a few actors seemed just a little bit too young, a little bit too, you know, uh, innocent looking, considering the roles that they were playing. Which is completely contrasted by Jason Clark in a rather unusual role where he seems to be having a lot of fun along with Riley Q as they play this sort of twisted version of Bonnie and Clyde and I feel like... Uh, 
They could have shined even more in this film, but it's the case that I mentioned earlier when I compared this film to Zodiac, that some of the scenes in this film just never quite reached their cinematic potential. They're good, but I feel like in the hands of a different director, they just could have reached a whole new level, if you know what I mean. My absolute favorite in this film, though, is Robert Pattinson, which I guess isn't as surprising. I mean, almost every everywhere I look, someone is raving about him, and I think it's really deserved he's really been on a roll these past few years, if you think about it. I think he's completely won over anyone who's, you know, a movie fan and has been a hater of his because of the Twilight films. For me personally, it was seeing him in Good Time. And then last year he had, you know, small but pretty good role in The King. And then one of the best performances of the year in The Lighthouse, for which I feel like he really got snubbed at the Oscars along with his co-star Willem Dafoe, who I feel like should have won the Oscar for Best uh, Supporting Actor, but that's another story. For me, in The Devil of Time, he just takes another step just higher in this echelon of great actors in Hollywood at the moment. I feel like in a film where all these talented actors and they're given these juicy roles where they really give their best, Pattinson just, j just goes to a whole nother level compared to them. It's not just the fact that uh, he didn't work with a dialect coach, and in many ways, a lot of people have said that you know his accent is all over the place or not all over the place but just a little bit too over the top and not accurate i feel like it's just so good it's so on point with his character this fake sly snaky human that's reverent and that's you know deceiving everyone and it's also not just the accent it's also his the way he carries himself his body language he wears a fat suit but there's a lot of mannerisms that he uses the way he uses his expressions and his eyes he's just so good and i definitely feel like he must be already in like the a-list level of talent at least maybe not demand but i feel like that's definitely gonna change once the batman comes out and the mainstream audience realizes that he's you know not just uh, Edward from Twilight, basically. Uh, so overall, The Devil of the Time is a solid film. I feel like some people might overhype it because it's it sort of masks itself as something greater than it really is, at least in my opinion. I don't feel like its themes uh, really add up too much in the end. They sort of posture to have this, you know, deeper meaning to them, but I, I don't really see it in the film. But it definitely has a lot of merits to it. I mean, as I mentioned, some great performances it's great to see actors like tom holland taking roles like this where they're you know not playing some pretty boys uh, or just you know some really commercial roles and that's another thing about this film that it's not this typical hollywood production it's a disturbing film about people whose stories you don't often see on the big screen and that's great uh, so if you enjoyed this review, please hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me a lot at this point. And what do you think of the performances? Who was your favorite or how would you rank them? Maybe you don't like Robert Pattinson at all. Uh, maybe you're from the area of uh, Nockham Stiff, which is actually a pretty funny name for a town. It's actually pretty hilarious that they kept the name. I like it. Um, anyway, thanks for watching the video and see you next time.